if you look at Frege, the thing is about arithmetic, you may take blackboard upon blackboard full of mathematical symbols just to prove that one and one is really equal to two. Well, it's definitely one, it's not two, it's not three, it's not zero, it is definitely one. It isn't a, a negative one, it's one and I can add it to this, I can subtract it from that, it can still be one. I can take its opposite, I can negate it, I can turn it upside down, I can transpose it over there and it's still one. I can multiply it down there and it's still one. And there's endless number of contortions of reason, rationale and mathematics that you put numbers through to prove that they're the real numbers, like the philosophy of arithmetic, if you will. But what we've discovered about the number one is that we have a very, very peculiar understanding of the number one. We have one empty set. We don't have any one anything. You can have one apple and you can have another apple. But these apples are both different. You can have one Ford Escort. So you say you had like one 1997 Ford Escort and you had a second 1997 Ford Escort. They're both red, they're both allegedly identical cars. They're not. You had one Ford Escort plus one Ford Escort. But the reality of it is, is that there are minute, fractal, chaotic differences in each of these. We're dealing with the set of all the components that look like a Ford Escort to us, plus another set of components that look like another Ford Escort to us equals two Ford Escorts. We don't have an absolute criteria for anything. So what we're dealing with is a kind of set theory and that is probably the best way to approach this cosmic chaos is to have stuff that resembles um, something be being in one set of things, but we set the criteria. But in reality, just simply the number one, the very basis of all our arithmetic, all our computing, at the moment we have no set way of defining it other than one empty set. Basically at the moment we've got one set of nothingness is one, plus another set of nothingness is two sets of nothingness, which we'll decide is two. This is the Fregean set theory for the philosophy of arithmetic. The very number one, the very digit upon which we base our notion of reality is a fabrication of nothingness wrapped up in a fancy parcel of arithmetic. That's what we have for the number one. Frege, F-R-E-G-E, now, there is another way to define the philosophy of arithmetic. This theory that I have again reinvented, I mean, it's been around you know, since Atlantis, probably known all over the cosmos. There are a set of essences. The reality of it is, if you look at this whole threeness stuff, I'm talking about this series of eight notes in a scale. In three dimensions, there are eight essences in the universe, eight notes in this scale. There are various harmonics, that's the next eight and the next eight. But there are always, there's an eightness about everything. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do basically. In this case, you never have nothing. There is no absolute zero. It may be zero in your scale, but it's zero in relation to something else. It isn't like just like zero. In this theory of relativity I'm talking about, it was Nikola Tesla's, it was the ancient Hindus 10,000 BC. It's the basis of the whole understanding of the cosmos that we live in. There is no zero. There is only a zero in relation to something else. As an example, supposing you had this lake and that there were eight levels of evolution, of eight levels of growth, eight stages of complexity in this lake, where zero was just plain ordinary water, and that with all its minerals and its content, and that level one was demonstrated by the plankton and microorganisms, level four or five by the fish, level eight by the Loch Ness Monster or the creature from the Black Lagoon or something like that. In this case, zero refers to a state of absolute simplicity or no evolution in relation to that lake. It isn't zero in relation to what's going on in the land or the mountains or the fields or the oceans. And that's what I mean And when I say that it's zero in relation to some context. The context is this lake. Now, in the same way, this German notion of arithmetic, the same zero that applied to that lake is the same zero that applies to all sorts of incredible conditions in the heart of the sun or in the galaxies and stuff. How could any zero relevant to the sun be relevant to what's in that lake? The heart of a star, the heart of that lake, two different notions of zero 